from Jakeman21642. Today I wanted to do an update video of my daily driver, my 2002 Subaru Outback H6 L.L. Bean Edition. I know I've been promising for a while that I would do an update video of my S60, and I promise it's coming, but due to no fault of my own or the cars, it's kind of out of commission right now. Um, those who follow me on Instagram have probably seen and uh, as soon as I've got it back, I'll have an update video on that one too. But at the moment, this car is actually doing full-time daily driver duty. So I thought I would do an update video of it since I actually got it cleaned up yesterday. My grandparents bought this car brand new back in 2002. And I'm the second owner. I've owned it for about six months now, actually. And I've put, I think, probably six or 7,000 miles on it at this point. And it has been flawless. You know, I, I would have laughed if you told me a year ago that I'd be driving a high mileage Subaru and it would be a reliable car, but this thing has been great. You know, I bought the car planning to either just give it a Viking funeral or um, flip it if it actually did end up not being blown up. But as of right now, this thing really is probably going to stick around for the long haul. I'm into it for so little. It is such a nice car and... As I stated in the last video, I love driving it way more than I should. So outside, we'll go over a few cosmetic things. Since the last video, I did put a brand new set of Depot headlights in. Nice thing about this car is it is old and Japanese, so parts are super cheap. These are like a hundred bucks on eBay, and they made it look like a brand new car. Of course, I put my uh, Silver Star ZXE bulbs back in, and then I've got the yellow fog lights down below. This car did pick up a little cosmetic upgrade thanks to New Year's Eve in the city of Richmond. Despite living in the nicest house in the nicest neighborhood that I've ever lived in in my entire life, people still like to fire their guns in the air on New Year's Eve, and what goes up has to come down somewhere, and it decided to come down in my hood. I'm really not that upset. I think eventually I'll probably get a new hood for the car. I mean, as you can see, the paint is not in the best shape even though this car was garage kept it was parked on the street a lot and it didn't get washed exactly a lot i know all of this was from the tree outside of my aunt's house because her car's covered in the same thing and then down below this is a little sandblasted because this used to spend a lot of time on the road between the beach and back so keeping an eye out for a clean forest green hood i've already talked to my paint guy too and he's told me that uh, if i can't find one he can paint one in Match it pretty well for me because the rest of the paint on this car is in really good shape. Really though, I'm not too stressed about it. I know it's kind of ugly, but I also think it's kind of funny and kind of badass. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with a car that had that. Otherwise, outside, um, I think it was done by the last video, but I did tint the windows on it. Do have five percent on the rear and then twenty percent on the front windows. Honestly, uh, after living with this, I don't think I'll ever go any lighter on any of my other cars. This is so nice. The interior of this car, it used to just be unbearable on days like today. I would get headaches from driving it around, so this is very, very welcome. As I said before, it is a bit of a ghetto tint job. I mean, I got what I paid for, but I don't really care. It's an old car to begin with. Around the rear, I think I mentioned last video, LED plate bulbs. Probably did pick up a few little new spots in the bumper, but whatever. City car, beater car, I really don't care did end up replacing i actually think i replaced both of the tail lights as well i think one i ended up getting on ebay and then after i installed that one this one started leaking and i just said screw it and went to the junkyard this is actually a remanufactured one so that should hold up that's a subaru one so i'm expecting it to leak again that was actually what made me replace the headlights is not that they were even faded that bad even though the new ones made it look like a brand new car these also started to leak water I really think this car is mad that it went from going, from being parked in a garage to parked outdoors because almost every single light has been replaced now due to water leaking. Did add the Yakima roof basket. I think this was originally for a 4Runner, but it fits perfectly fine. It's a little big, but I love the way it looks. And I actually have gotten up on the roof a few times, so pretty useful. Go ahead though, step inside. One fun thing I did notice is uh, the keyless entry key, which by the way is some of the worst keyless entry ever. Unless you're standing about five feet from that fender or five feet from the trunk of the car, it just does not want to work. Probably work now, of course, on video. 
But um, this is actually the same universal key fob a lot of stuff um, used back in the day. This originally did have Subaru on it, but it's rubbed off by now, of course. But you'll see E36s, like old Z3s, all kinds of old stuff use this exact same key fob. Inside, typical Subaru. I have to say, the more I've lived with it, it's really made me realize how nice of a car this was back in the day. I grew up with it, so it never really was anything to me, but back in the day, I mean, this thing was loaded, and this interior is so nice, too. Go ahead and start it. And you can see, just flipped 183K on the way from work literally yesterday. And despite the mileage, this thing still starts up, runs, drives, shifts, does everything absolutely perfect. Go ahead and close the door. But as I was saying, I just love the inside of this car. I mean, I work at a luxury dealership. I'm in and out of $60,000, $70,000 cars all day. It's, I hate to sound jaded, but it really is hard to impress me. And I still feel right at home in this. I guess it's probably because I've always owned old cars. I mean, I grew up in old station wagons, especially this car. My parents had a Passat wagon. We had a legacy wagon. Um, my grandparents had a Camry wagon back at the same time when this was new. So I feel right at home in an old station wagon. And this interior is nice. It's very old and Japanese. I mean, all soft materials, like I said last video, padded leather on the door. That's another reason I wanted to tint the windows so dark is these don't age that well. And I actually have one that has. Now that the sun is kind of getting brutal, I'm probably gonna start using a uh, window shade when I park. I do throw a rag over the steering wheel just to keep this factory Momo wheel looking nice, which for 183K, I have to say, I used to make jokes about Subaru. They really build a hell of a car. I mean, there's no really extreme signs of wear. That's probably the worst inside is just the bolster right here on the seat. But I mean, I work at a Volvo dealer. I see cars with a quarter of the mileage this one has in way worse shape inside. But otherwise over here, um, fog lights, cruise control, the heated windshield, which is very nice in the snow. I said the gauges. I love just having a nice, simple old car gauge cluster. It's the typical old Japanese car green at night. It looks so good. Um, in the middle, two air vents, of course, up top. I did add this since the last video. You can see I stuffed a mask behind it to keep it from rattling. But I did add a uh, MagSafe wireless charger up here to put my phone on. Since Virginia is finally at the same point every other state was at 15 years ago, and we have hands-free laws, added one of these to both my cars. Very nice, it's like 30 bucks on Amazon and it works really well. So I did my best to kind of tuck the wires. And then down here, that plugged in, I have another wire run up to the dash cam that I did add, exact same one as the S60. And I kind of did my best to try to run and hide everything. And then also a couple days ago, I finally added Bluetooth to this car. So down here, you can see once again, I think this was like 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, just plugged it into my tape to aux adapter and that works fine can make phone calls um absolutely fine use siri voice commands um navigation comes through it i can also stream spotify satellite radio so until this tape deck breaks it is staying originally i was thinking about adding a uh, carplay head unit to this car but it's not even worth it i did some more research this is actually a factory clarion deck and then all of the speakers are also clarion and this was back when Clarion still made good stuff. So I would give this probably a seven out of 10. For the time, I would say this is easily a nine out of 10 stereo, but it does more than enough. Even for an audiophile like me, I think it sounds great. Anyone else who has one of these with this system, let me know if you upgraded the speakers and what you put in and if it was worth it. Cause as of right now, like I said, these sound good enough. I really don't want to mess with them cause I'm afraid to make anything rattle because every other old Japanese car I've owned, it rattled constantly after replacing the speakers. So anyone who has one, let me know what you've done or if you've just left it stock. Six disc changer down below, um, that works fine. Obviously you can see I keep it loaded. Down below, as I showed, um, can't believe I haven't blown this fuse yet, but dash cam, phone charger, and then uh, the Bluetooth adapter plugged in there. Four speed auto, which is a four speed auto, I mean, 
typical of this time period. It's slow, it's lazy, it slams. This car has shifted like the transmission was gonna fall out since it was new. That's just how all of these are. It's actually been rebuilt once. It's only got 60 or 70,000 miles on it, but this is definitely not a great transmission. I have to go three quarter throttle every morning to get it to downshift to merge, but I've also owned a Saturn and enough old cars with four speeds that it really doesn't bother me. You know, beater car status. Cup holders, all of that down there. Parking brake, of course. Um, I think these were in it last video. These are one of the first things I got, but a brand new set of OEM all weathers for this car was super cheap on eBay. It was like 50 bucks, so I picked that up. Like I said earlier, I missed having an old Japanese car because it's so easy to make them nice because parts are so cheap. Um, seats in this one, leathers, holding up great. You can see this seat is immaculate. Got the LL Bean badging. Auto dimming mirror up top. This one has held up so far. It's got a couple lines that have been in it, but it's at least not delaminated like the last one. And the tint is so dark in this car, it doesn't even need to auto dim anymore. <laughs> Compass built in, of course. Sunroof controls up here. I did figure out with the front one, it actually does still work. Just the mechanism that pops it up doesn't work. So you can push it up manually and it will stay. I actually kind of like though that it doesn't work because I can keep this one closed and have this one open. This one doesn't even make that much of a difference other than noise, so kind of nice. I don't really plan on fixing that any more than it is now. Otherwise, inside, everything is really the same. And once again, typical old Japanese car, 183,000 miles and everything works. All the power windows work, they're all fast. Power locks work fine. Um, only thing burned out is the odometer, which I know how to fix. I've just been too lazy to fix it. And I'm not saying burned out as in doesn't work, just the backlight at night doesn't pop on. But otherwise, I mean, automatic climate control's fine. Nothing's noisy. Um, stereo, even the tape deck works great. And since this is probably one of the newest cars you could get with a tape deck, it's a really, really nice sounding one. I actually have my dad gave me this and it's so cool another reason why i don't plan on getting rid of the tape deck this is so hipster and nerdy but i don't even care i've got a ton of his old bootlegs and other taped concerts live stuff things like that and these are all on like nice heavy high quality like professional tapes most of these were recorded from dats or uh even cds so they sound really good, and especially coming through a nice stereo like this, these sound just as good as CDs. People get in all the time when I'm listening to them and don't even believe that it's a cassette tape. So, like I said, nerdy and hipstery, I know, but super cool. I love having it. I, once again, I grew up with this kind of stuff. Go ahead and step out. I know I said this would be a quick video and it's already 15 minutes. Pop the hood, put the window down. Nice too, this does have heated mirrors. Back in 02, that was kind of a baller thing to have. None of my Hondas had that. Back seat, which even since the last video, I don't think anyone has sat back here. You can see by the amount of junk that's back here, once again, beater car status. That headrest, I had the seats folded down because I had to throw a generator in here. And um, I kind of just left that headrest out because it's nice for visibility. Like I said, no one rides in here anyway. Seat in this one, I did break the cup holders the exact same way the first set got broken by not closing them when I flipped the seat up. So need to make another junkyard trip for that. And I think I mentioned last video, I got this from a smoker's package car, which hadn't been used, but still clean. So now it's a little storage compartment there instead of just a blank. Otherwise, back seat's the same as it's been. Like I said, you can see all the belts are even tucked away because no one uses them. Inside of the trunk, which I actually cleaned out for this video, I need to get a new set of struts. These still hold it up, but they're definitely a little slow and they're something that's cheap and easy. Inside, um, this is another upgrade since the last video. I did get a cargo cover that actually retracts. This is probably the most expensive thing I've gotten for this car. This was like 160 bucks, but totally worth it. Brand new one, Subaru OEM. 
Um, you can see otherwise back here. I mean, this is why I wanted a wagon. A great car to chuck everything I need in. I keep all my tools in here, a lot of my detailing stuff. Of course, it's a Subaru, so you gotta keep some spare coolant. Surprisingly though, have not had to use any yet. Um, otherwise, jump pack. You can see, it's all my roadside assistance stuff. I'm a used car manager, so I actually use most of this on a daily basis. Very nice otherwise. Um, seats fold down, they flip up, so you get a completely flat load floor in here. And then this one does have the OEM. Cargo caddy, which I need to actually take out and hose out. And it does have the OEM trunk mat as well. Go ahead and close that. You can see the tent job, like I said, it's so ghetto. A lot of the cut lines are so bad, but I don't even care. And I have to say, I mean, I know these cars are built for driving in winter, but recently we had a couple inches of snow here in central Virginia, and this was hands down the best car I've ever driven in bad weather. In L.L. Bean Edition, of course, it is all-wheel drive, but um, being the L.L. Bean Edition, it does not have traction control, stability control, anything like that. You did have to step up to the VDC, so super analog, but still super controlled and easy to drive in the snow. I mean, even on the brakes, which are absolutely shot, I do have new front pads and rotors. Um, I just haven't had a chance to put them on yet. But uh, even with the shot brakes, no problem at all. It's on nice, brand new Goodyear tires, so I'm sure that helped. But, I mean, just a dream to drive in the snow. And it was nice, too, because I can actually keep my nice car, my Volvo, off the road when it snows. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot I'm forgetting to say, but... This has been such a great car. I really don't have that much to say. It has been absolutely flawless. You can hear how well it is running right now. Up front, of course, like I said, I did the Silver Star ZXEs. It is sunny, so you can barely see, but my yellow JDM boy fogs. And under the hood, obviously this is Subaru's H6 3.0. And if you know anything about these, I mean, this is the engine to have. Timing chain, no head gasket issues. Doesn't matter because both of those have already been replaced on this one. And when I got it, I thought it had a blown head gasket, but after investigating, it just had a lot of really small, really bad leaks, um, oil and coolant. So cooling system overhaul. I've now changed the oil twice. Um, I'm running Royal Purple Synthetic. I've got a Purolator Boss oil filter on it. Um, surprisingly, 183,000 miles does not burn a drop of oil. Even checked this morning, the oil was still overfilled a little because I was expecting it to leak when I put synthetic in it. And a thousand miles later, it looks like it hasn't lost a drop. So, as I said earlier, this car is definitely sticking around for the long haul. It's given me absolutely no reason to get rid of it. I'm trying to think otherwise. I did replace um, the serpentine belt. The one that was in it looked fine, but it was starting to get noisy, so I did it just for peace of mind. Um, air filter, like I said. Drill some holes in the air box. That sounds cool now. Tired of holding that. But yeah, I mean, I know I've said pretty much all I had to say, but this has been a fantastic car. I really, I used to make fun of Subaru, but this thing has treated me so well that I'm definitely a little bit of a fanboy now. So plenty more videos to come. Let me know what you guys want to see on this car. Um, I've got some driving videos up. I'll link them down below. And any questions, comments, anything like that, just let me know, guys. Thanks for watching.